Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.4 has been out a few days with over 50 changes, features and updates. But is it the best so far? Well, many of you seem to think so based off the YouTube community poll, where we have over 10,000 votes and over 230 comments at the time of this video. I've compiled all of that information to give you the best understanding of what it's like with battery life, we have statistics about that and much more. So let's explore this in more detail. Now I have to say that I haven't used a ton of new features in it, but shortcut seems to be fairly helpful. And also if you're making phone calls, the new voice isolation feature is really nice. So that's something that many of us have wanted for a long time. And if you're not familiar with how to enable that, let me show you that. Now you'll see I have a SIM card in one of these. This is actually running 16.5. I have 16.4 on this device, but let me show you how voice isolation works. We'll go ahead and place a phone call. Once you've placed the call, go ahead and go into your control center, tap on your mic mode and turn on voice isolation. You can enable it that way, just like you can on FaceTime as well. Now this past week, Apple announced WWDC for June 5th. I had a separate video about this announcement, WWDC 2023, June 5th to the 9th. It'll be the same as last year where they sort of have an online keynote presentation, and then they'll have some developers there and more. So this is where we'll learn about iOS 17, Mac OS 14, maybe even reality OS with a new headset and much more. Also this past week, Apple announced iOS 15.7.4 and iPadOS 15.7.4. Some of you have asked me to cover that, but that is only a security update. And you can see here under the Apple security website, you can see all of the different security updates listed here. Now it's specifically for the iPhone 6S, all models, seven all models, so that means seven, seven plus, iPhone SE first gen, iPad Air 2, iPad mini fourth gen, and iPod touch seventh gen. Unfortunately, they don't have even IPSW files for the iPhone 8 or anything else, but there are a lot of different security patches, so I would highly recommend you update if you can, if you're on iOS 15. This will patch all of those different security issues with things like Find My, The Kernel, and much more. So be sure to update if you haven't already. Now I did want to mention we'll have a different video tomorrow about iOS 16.5 beta 1 that I've been using full time on my main phone, but I did use 16.4 well in the RC version and the public version for a few days until we got the next version. I also have my daughter's phone here that's been using it full time with 16.4. Before we talk about that, there were a couple app updates, and if we go into the App Store, and the recent apps that have been updated is Pages, Keynote, and Numbers, Apple's version of basically Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. But what they've added that's significant is if you have an iPad using Apple Pencil, and you have the Hover feature on the latest iPads Pro, it now works with Apple Hover, so it makes it easier to navigate, write, sketch, and illustrate. So that's something they've updated, nice little updates there from Apple, and hopefully we get some major pro updates in the future. It seems like it's been a long time since we had that. But now let's talk about iOS 16.4 because a lot of you have been asking, should I install it yet? So let's talk about the good. And so far it's more stable and sorted battery for most, but we'll talk about battery a little bit more in detail a little bit later, but most that have had it on their phone for a few days find it to be quite good. As far as stability, apps opening without a problem, things loading, going into different apps and playing things, whether that's music or games and more. Early on, it was processing in the background or indexing, so it was a little bit slow for some people. But in general, many people say it's stable. Occasionally, some people had to reboot. It fixed a lot of issues. Storage has improved greatly for a lot of people. I showed this in the 16.4 is out what's new video. And if we go on this phone, just go to general, iPhone storage, many people are showing that not only is it using less storage in general, the background activity with system data is significantly lower than in previous updates. You'll see here it's 15.54 gigabytes. This will typically be under 20 gigabytes, a lot of the time even under 10 gigabytes. Now it is cache data, it's not too much of an issue, but for the people where it was taking up more storage than they actually had available so that they couldn't install apps, it seems to be fixed for most people. This is a great update for a lot of people for that specific reason. As far as camera quality, well, this is pretty subjective. I think they're fixing it a little bit, but they haven't mentioned it in iOS 16.4. So here are a couple different photos showing what it looks like in a regular room environment. 
under not bright studio lights that we have here, and they look pretty good compared to what you see on the screen. However, the overall camera doesn't seem to be 100% fixed, especially with skin tones and things like that. So I still think they're working on it, and maybe they'll fix it with iOS 16.5. But in the past, they haven't fixed a whole lot with that. So we'll have to wait and see. But there are still some bugs in this update, so we'll go over that, and then we'll talk about battery. The first thing is AirPods animation isn't showing the correct animations. Not for everyone. So what I mean by that is when you open up your AirPods, sometimes they're showing the wrong AirPods people have reported to me. You'll see I need to charge the case apparently, it's down to 1%. It's showing correctly here, but sometimes under coverage, it's not showing correctly. So if you go into your settings and then go to coverage, which is under about, some people are saying the icons are wrong and you can see here for the AirPods Pro 2, it's showing just a drawing instead of the icon. That's a little bug that I think Apple needs to fix here. Also, one thing I've heard from quite a few people is that AirDrop and Handoff aren't working for some. Handoff initially wasn't working for me, it then started working without a problem. So I could open up a web page here and then go to it on my Mac and it would work. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't, and now it's working consistently. But for some people, it seems to be a problem for some reason. Also, one really odd bug is Select All doesn't seem to be working or even be available. So if we go into the security website here, we'll select here, you'll see under the selection, we have Copy, Find Selection, Look Up, Translate and Search, but we don't have Select All anymore. I'm not sure why this is missing. It seems to be missing in Safari mainly, but sometimes other places. So that's a little odd. Also, some inconsistencies are there with the volume. So when you turn volume up and down, sometimes the actual speed or the turning up of the volume isn't working properly, especially when connected to AirPods. So if I connect one, let's see if there's any difference here. So we'll put one in my ear, give it a second, and you'll see some inconsistencies there with the case thinking it was charged and then it wasn't. So let's turn up the volume here. Seems to be working okay, but again, I've seen this inconsistency as well. Additionally, after I installed the update, I saw some really odd notification issues. Now we've seen some inconsistencies here, but you'll see I screen recorded this and you can see what it was like. They would show up, then they'd disappear and then show up slowly. So this is something I saw over and over and still see with iOS 16.4. For some reason, they haven't fully fixed notifications. Also, some people have said if you go into accessibility, under accessibility, go into motion and turn on reduce motion, when you go into things such as Safari, they're saying it's very slow to bring up the keyboard. I haven't experienced this, however, I don't typically have that feature turned on, but sometimes they're saying it's very slow to bring up that keyboard and it's causing a problem. So that could be some issues for quite a few people if you're using that feature. The only other thing people have mentioned is it can be a little sluggish for some with connecting to AirPods. You can see mine seem to connect just fine. I don't really seem to have an issue. It connects right away and I haven't personally had that issue, but it is an issue for some people. Wi-Fi has been fine. I saw no complaints of that. And the only complaints I saw of slow performance is when they were using low power mode. However, low power mode actually sort of reduces the processing power. It pulls that down to try and save some additional power. So it's not allowing you to use the full potential of the processor and is also slowing things down. So performance seems to be fine for most people, whether that's an iPhone 10, something that's a little bit older, or the first generation that's supported still currently with iOS 16, as well as a 12 or, or a 14 Pro Max. Performance seems to be really good. As far as overall battery life, well, let me share this with you. This is my daughter's phone that she's been using, a 14 Plus, and let's take a look at battery because her battery life, she's had it for a few days. We'll go down here, and you can see her battery health here is at 100%. Here's the cycle count from Coconut Battery on the left, and let's take a look at the battery. She's actually gotten pretty good battery life, so you'll see... Well, yesterday, one hour and 20 minutes of screen on time, seven hours and 50 minutes of screen off time, and used about a quarter of the battery. The day before, two hours and 39 minutes of screen on time, seven hours and one minutes of screen off time, and used just over 25% of the battery. So she's easily getting through the day without a problem. She's using this along with an iPad, but seems to be getting really good battery life on it. It is a newer phone, but seems to be pretty good. 
Also, one other person sent me their battery life. Let's take a quick look at that. And this was sent in by Cameron on a 14 Pro Max. He's getting pretty good battery life as well. Two hours and 57 minutes of screen active time using just over 25% of the battery life. So the same was true the day before. Five hours and 20 minutes using just under 50% pretty great battery life overall. So I think it's doing well for a lot of people, but I went into the YouTube community poll to see what people had to say. I took every one of your comments. There's a couple hundred here and then saw who mentioned battery and what it was like. So as you can see here with the statistics, 40% say it's good, 31% say that it's bad and 29% say that it's the same. So it seems to be either the same or good, only 31% are reporting that it's bad. Give it a few days, see if it improves, but that's a good sign in general compared to what we've seen before. So no, it's not at the level of iOS 15 typically, but it's definitely much better. With iOS 16.4, I think we've seen the majority of major updates at this point until we get to iOS 17. We'll get different things with iOS 16.5, 16.6, maybe 16.7, until we have a final release of iOS 17, typically in September. That's where we'll see the public release, usually around the launch of iPhone 15. So this week or this coming week, we could expect really nothing from Apple, but iOS 16.5 beta 2 probably in a couple weeks. And then of course at WWDC on June 5th, we can expect to see iOS 17 with new features and more. So that's really what I would expect going forward with minor updates until then. That's typically what Apple does every year. Now, like I said, I'll have a video tomorrow about iOS 16.5 beta one, where we'll talk about that with the regular news and things we'll cover there since I've been using that full time as well. I'm also running that on my iPad, but we're seeing good results with 16.4 on the iPad as well. Now I did want to talk about some of your comments on the YouTube community poll. So let's take a look at those. John Michael Thomas said iPhone 14 Pro Max, iOS 16.4. iOS 16 in general has not improved much on bugs since release. Really disappointed with iOS this year, though I have gotten used to most of the bugs so they don't bother me as much now really hope iOS 17 focuses on stability as this is this year in my opinion hasn't been acceptable. John Linton says I think 16.4 is one of the best updates iOS 16 has been. I feel like this is how it goes every year about this time it's over and the new iOS is set to come out and we have to start all over again. Matt Mills says 14 Pro Max going from the RC to the final gave me back a gig of storage. Battery life seems to be fairly decent, no annoying bugs as of yet that I've noticed. Christopher Muscio says, the update on my 14 Pro Max has been the best in iOS 16 by far. Performance is spectacular and the battery has finally become almost 13 Pro Max territory. I can charge it every other day instead of daily. And so that's everything with iOS 16.4. I think it's a pretty decent update overall. It should be at this point. We've had iOS 16 for many months. So hopefully Apple really focuses on stability while still offering a few new features here and there. Let me know what you would like to see most with iOS 17. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.